OK, this summer may be the very last time it will be safe to fly in Europe because body scanners are going to be introduced. Um, what I'm going to show you first is an article. Uh, it's a very small article that appeared. I saw it in the Daily Mail. And there's a much uh, larger article which is available online. And it has been reported in other newspapers too. But there's not really a great deal being said about it significantly. People aren't being alarmed too much. But when you look at what it says, it really is quite worrying. Very worrying, actually. The European Commission stopped new trials of the, the, the device last November over fears they could emit harmful levels of cancer-causing radiation. So when you go to the internet and you Google this, you will find lots of sites which suggest that Europe was against these scanners and that will probably reassure you. But what you need to do is you need to look at the dates because uh, they've changed their minds. I think what basically happens with these politicians is that they um, very often say they don't agree with something and basically they're holding out their hands and saying come on let's have the bribes come in and when the bribes have come in then they change their minds of course and they say they will be introducing it. So these scanners have 20 times more radiation to the skin than previously thought potentially increasing the risk of skin cancer. The EC allowed Manchester Airport to continue trialling the scanners. They, they, at that time, they thought they were not safe, but they nevertheless uh, used um, people travelling from Manchester as guinea pigs for it, which just goes to show the mentality, I think. Staff analysing the uh, images must be in a separate, separate room and are apparently unable to see the the passenger. So they have uh, now decided that they're going to introduce these throughout Europe. They have already been introduced in America, but the, the difference is that in America they are allowed to have the choice between going through these scanners or um, accepting a pat-down. Now you may think that the pat down is, um, you know, a real, really good opt uh, out, but actually, uh, as it's been proven many times, it amounts to uh, sexual molestation. In fact, what they have uh, allowed in America is for TSA officials to grope people's genitals, etc., which has really been quite shocking and has caused an awful lot of trouble. Uh, the UK, of course, is really the belly of the beast, and I think it's been ahead of Europe, really, in deciding to go for these body scanners. Um, this is an article which shows that this is the case. Citing a non-specific security threat to Britain, the Transport Secretary, Secretary announced in a common statement that there would be no pat-down option available to flyers despite an EU mandate for the provision to be introduced. Um, and it says, I have considered this carefully, however I have decided against it on security, operational and privacy grounds. I do not believe that a pat-down search is equivalent in security terms to a security scan, Greening states. Uh, those passengers selected for scanning will therefore not be able to fly if they are not willing to be scanned. Greening rights, adding that the ruling would be imp imposed through powers under the Aviation Security Act. Uh, Greening also said that the use of radiation firing scanners at some British airports will not be banned despite the European Commission concerns about possible links to cancer. So that was at a time when the Europeans were dubious about introducing them. As I say now, the Europeans have changed their mind. But it just shows that Britain is at the forefront of all this. They're not just following the European instructions. They are at the forefront of it all. And I'd like to point out that even if you are not picked out on the scan, because at the moment they're picking people out, I say at the moment, um, but even if you're not picked out on the way out, 
you have two legs of your journey and you may be picked out on the way back, which may mean you're stranded if you don't want to go through the scan. So I'm going to try and give you a summary of all this and I'm having great difficulty in doing so because looking through all these articles it's quite confusing and I think that's done deliberately. They, um, they want you to be confused. So what they do is they uh, put out a statement uh, which is what they're proposing to do and then they sort of muddy the water so you're not quite clear. I think from what I gather they have decided that they are going for the body scanners. I'm pretty sure that the UK has certainly decided that it will be a case of um, no scan, no fly. Um, as for Europe, that's a little bit more ambiguous. It's not actually clear whether they are going to allow a pat down, but I don't think Britain is. Um, and it's quite clear that eventually Europe will follow and um, there will be no pat down. These things happen very, very gradually according to the principles of Fabianism, which I've talked about in other um, videos, which is that the way they operate is to do things really, really gradually so people don't get too alarmed. And I think the rest shows the dangers of British people being so completely disengaged from politics because it says that Greening claimed that there were only 12 refusals at Manchester Airport um, for the body scans so people apparently are going through them quite willingly. Actually I've heard in another article that there were 23 refusals but uh, one of the things you note about this is that there's been no talk about it in the newspapers at all. They've kept completely quiet about the introduction of and um, the testing of these machines at um, Manchester Airport. Um, and people were asked, do you think airport strip search scanners should be banned in light of the cancer risks they could pose? A majority, 67%, said no. They were then asked to explain their reason for this decision, to which 54% said they would rather risk their health and travel safe, whilst a fifth, 22%, said they didn't believe the health risks. Furthermore, 46% of the respondents polled said they would like to see the security body scanners installed in all major UK airports, which is unbelievable, really, and so totally ignorant because um, you know the security risks are nothing compared with the health risks. The underwear bomber, uh, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that he was actually uh, escorted onto the plane and this was something which was set up precisely in order to introduce these scanners just as um, many people now believe 9-11 didn't happen in the way we were told it happened. And this has been um, the starting point for all the um, legislation which has taken away people's liberties. And if you want to know the motivation for this, even if you're not a conspiracy theorist, if you are a conspiracy theorist I'll offer some other ideas to you. Um, but, uh, you know, if you don't believe in that sort of thing, that's fine. Um, just have a look at these manufacturers. Rap is Scan Systems Limited, has a head office in Red Hill, and it seems as though that's a manufacturer of backscatter and millimetre wave scanners. As I've said before, it's the backscatter ones that are going to be introduced at the moment. Um, and um, Smith's Group PLC is in Victoria Street, London as well and that's a manufacturer of millimetre wave scanners and other transport security devices. So you have to ask yourself the question, you know, these British companies, are we going to be able to put a stop to these um, body scanners in view of the fact that British companies are involved, I don't think so, and especially in view of the fact that MPs have probably been given, let's call them, inducements. OK, we learned that there are two types of scanner. There's millimetre wave and backscatter x-ray, 
And these two types of naked body scanners are currently in use throughout the US and now Australia are linked to causing serious health problems. Backscatter X-ray scanners emit cancer-causing ionizing radiation that also damages reproductive function. Uh, while millimeter wave scanners emit terahertz radiation that literally unzips and destroys DNA. And as I say, it's the backscatter scanners that are going to be introduced in Europe and Britain. Um, and the counter argument to these scanners, of course, is that the doses of radiation are so small that it's really little more than background radiation. I will be looking at what doctors say about this in a minute, um, but you can also look at this article which says, contrary to popular belief, even the so-called small doses of radiation emitted from the machines are toxic and represent additional exposure that could lead to the onset of cancer. So you know, even if the doctors I'm going to look at in a minute are wrong and, you know, it isn't a big extra exposure, it's still adding to what you're already getting. And so it represents additional exposure and simply so that you can go on holiday, which is ridiculous. But let's examine what the uh, doctors say about the health risks. Uh, this is a letter which is written to um, John P. Holdren who is assistant to the President for Science and Technology and I'll talk a bit more about him in a minute but um, what, what they're saying is that they're very very concerned about the potential serious health risks of the recently adopted whole body backscanner x-ray airport security scanners and they um, introduce themselves um, as uh, you know there's Dr Elizabeth Blackburn, a Nobel laureate, um, Dr Sadat is Professor Emeritus in Biochemistry and Biophysics at the University of California um, with expertise in imaging uh, the other co-signers include Dr. Mark Schumann, an internationally well-known and respected cancer expert, and UCSF professor, as well as Drs. David Agard and Robert Stroud, who are UCSF professors, X-ray crystallographers, imaging experts, and NAS members. These are incredibly well-qualified people the um, most knowledgeable people that you could possibly have and they are concerned <clears throat> and yet people at Manchester um, were expressing the belief that it was a load of rubbish. So they're writing to say that they are incredibly concerned about the safety of air travel passengers. They say an important consideration is that a large fraction of the population will be subject to the new x-ray scanners and be a potential risk and they discuss who these people are in particular um, below so I'm going to go on with that next. So the first thing they do is they address the belief that the radiation isn't any more than uh, you get from background exposure. They say the X-ray dose from these devices has often been compared in the media to the cosmic ray exposure inherent to airplane travel or that of a chest X-ray. However, this comparison is very misleading. Both the air travel uh, cosmic ray exposure and chest X-rays have much higher X-ray energies and the health consequences are appropriately understood in terms of the whole body volume dose. In contrast, these new airport scanners are largely depositing their energy into the skin and immediately adjacent um, tissue. And since this is such a small fraction of body weight um, stroke volume, possibly by uh, one or two orders of magnitude, the real dose to the skin is now high. 
Um, and in addition, it says there's no independent, or real independent safety data, it doesn't exist. Uh, so they're very, very concerned about it, obviously, but not the passengers at Manchester. We're still looking at the memo from these uh, very prestigious doctors and uh, they deal next with uh, what they, they refer to as vulnerable um, passengers, particularly vulnerable passengers, and they say that they're very concerned about particularly the large population of older travellers who are more than 65 years of age uh, because of the risk from the mutagenic effects of the x-rays based on the known biology of melanocyte ageing, I think it says. Right, so that would be very convenient, I think, for the globalists, because I do think they want to see people uh, dying off as fast as they can. They're very concerned about overpopulation, so that would be, um, as far as they're concerned, a plus point. Um, the fraction of the female population uh, that's particularly sensitive to breast cancer, Not notably because these women who have defects in DNA repair mechanisms are particularly prone to cancer. X-ray mammograms are not performed on them, so they're at risk. Um, the population of um, immunocompromised individuals, as HIV sufferers and people who've had chemotherapy in that, they're going to be at risk for, for cancer induction by the high skin dose. Children and adolescents have not been properly evaluated and we know that children are more likely to be at risk uh, from radiation. We've heard about that with the mobile phones. Um, pregnant women, and of course you won't even know, there will be lots of women going through these who won't even know they're pregnant, so it's a huge risk for them I should think. And then, um, that because of the proximity of the testicles to skin, this tissue um, uh, is at risk for sperm mutagenesis, right? So that will mean that the sperm won't be working so well, which again will be very convenient for the globalists with their depopulation obses obsession. Um, there are a number of red flags relating to the hardware itself. Um, the x-ray beam is very intense. Any glitch in power at any point uh, would make a, for an intense radiation dose to a single spot on the skin. So it's going to cause a lot of problems, I think. Um, the TSA is already complaining about resolution limitations. In other words, <coughs> the number of dots per inch, I suppose, is is insufficient. So they want to increase the the... Uh, resolution, um, the, who will keep the manufacturers um, from just raising the dose, an easy way to improve signal to noise and get higher resolution. So in other words, if they can't see them, the images properly, they'll just increase the dose and they won't worry about things. And neither will the passengers at Manchester Airport, of course. Now, these doctors are obviously not conspiracy theorists because the next thing they raise is the problem that um, often happens, they say, in a, a crisis where there's a sense of urgency and it frequently leads to hasty decisions um, where unintended consequences are not recognised. They give as their example uh, the risk of uh, blood transfusions in the early stages of the AIDS epidemic that weren't recognised, approval of drugs and de devices without sufficient review, um, improper standards set by the EPA, to name a few. Um, of course, the conspiracy theorists would say that this has all been done deliberately, um, but the doctors aren't saying that. And uh, what the doctors are saying, though, is that there will be an increased risk of cancer to children and other vulnerable populations. But, of course, the passengers at Manchester Airport will happily put their children, their young children, I suppose it's even babies go through these uh, scanners, and uh, they will put them through just to go on holiday. And of course there are other issues too, 
uh, I mentioned in uh, the video I did, I think it was a couple of years ago, it's called Destination Unknown Excessive Security, and I talked there about the fact that, you know, are these scanners going to be properly maintained? I don't think they've got any of the maintenance that they have in hospitals for uh, radiation machines. Um, they cut, they're, they're, they're going to be cutting the expenses in airports, so that I don't think they'll be properly maintained at all, and that's very, very important. But also there's uh, the cumulative effect of all the um, x-rays that we have. Um, and here it says, for example, that one CT scan exposes the body to the equivalent of several hundred x-rays. They seem to be now um, casting suspicion on mammograms as well. And uh, there's been quite a few articles about that in the press. So, you know, people are having lots and lots of x-rays. And of course, sometimes, it's got to be said, sometimes it's it, you have to have an x-ray. Um, and then, in, in those circumstances, you just accept it. But to have additional radiation exposure simply in order to travel uh, when it's not necessary is outrageous. So this is the Transport Security Agency. The employees, um, there are clusters of cancer which are being um, caused by the fact that these employees stand around the machines and they're being refused any measuring devices to measure the dose of radiation that they're getting. The dog keeps ruining my recordings but I'm learning to be tolerant. Um, and this is the book called Ecoscience, Population Resources, Environment, uh, which J.P. Holdren, you remember J.P. Holdren was the science uh, advisor to Obama, uh, who those uh, prestigious doctors wrote to. Um, I think if they'd known something about him, they probably wouldn't have bothered. Now this man, J.P. Holdren, is a eugenicist. I don't think he makes any secret of that. And uh, he's written the book, which obviously was very expensive, so a lot of people didn't buy it. But uh, uh, then there came a point where people started to buy it, and when they did and read it, they were absolutely horrified by what they read. And <coughs> a lot of um, scanned pages have gone up on the internet. Here's a review which I found on Amazon of the book, somebody that read the entire book, and uh, it sums it up in this way. Uh, J.P. Holdren said that w women could be forced to abort their pregnancies whether they wanted to or not. The population at large should be sterilised by infertility drugs intentionally put into the nation's drinking water or in food. And I think we've got... Um, sodium fluoride which ironically I think may be in the water for the passengers of Manchester Airport and it's certainly going to keep them tranquilized because it's the same stuff as is in uh, Prozac and that's in the water there I think but you better check that. Single mothers and teen mothers should have their babies seized from them against their will and given away to other couples to raise. People who contribute to social deterioration, and of course it's gods like um, J.P. Holden who will decide that, i.e. undesirables, can be required by law to exercise a reproductive responsibility, so they'll be um, sterilised forcibly. And finally, his crowning uh, statements are about a planetary regime, that's world government, who um, should assume cont control of the global economy and also dictate the most intimate details of Americans' lives using an armed international police force. Now, that is what he talks about, and I'm going to prove that to you by showing some scanned pages. Um, the scanned pages cannot have been um, falsified in any way because I've actually seen the pages open with the book open and I've seen it on many, many sources. I am convinced that this is what he said.
So here are the pages from his book. This is about um, contributing to social deterioration and this is about adding sterilant to the drinking water. This is about surrendering to uh, the sovereignty as a first step and we can see that that has already happened in the UK. Um, we've surrendered sovereignty to Europe and when he talks about the, the, the uh, people failing to comprehend the magnitude of the danger, he's talking about the danger of overpopulation. And here we have the planetary regime, which is world government, for determining the optimum population for the world. Now they're going to divide the world into regions, not, you know, not um, countries obviously, because uh, people will have given up their sovereignty. Um, but there will be regions and uh, those regions will determine whether you can have children or not and probably whether you are due for um, euthanasia or not. And here we are again, the planetary regime, control of population. This is a picture of John uh, J.P. Holdren and I think this one actually really reminds me incredibly of uh, Dr. Shipman. And I don't like being mean about people, but um, this man is a eugenicist, so I don't think there is very much difference. He believes he is uh, in a god-like position, and Shipman believed very much the same thing. So I don't think it's unfair to, co to make a comparison there. And of course you've got to remember that uh, J.B. Holdren is the advisor to Obama, who in turn is determining policy throughout the world. So, um, you know, we've got every reason to not believe, as the passengers of Manchester Airport do, that our government is going to look after us. That is definitely not the case, I think. And if you think that you can avoid these body scanners by not flying, first I'd like to point out that there are a lot of people who use planes to go on holiday and maybe they can avoid going on holiday abroad or certainly by plane but there will be a lot of people as well who will have because of globalization and because of the fact that the powers that be have said that people have to go where the jobs are they will find that their family have been scattered in different areas of the world and uh, this means of course that they won't be able to see them now, if you think that you're going to avoid that by not flying and by taking a train or a ship, etc., I think you'd better think again because, as I've said, these things are rolled out gradually and we've had the testing in the United States and I can tell you that I have been following this for some time and they have introduced uh, mobile vans which can be put on street corners. Uh, they are stopping cars. The TSA are stopping cars and forcing people through body scanners or in the US it, you do have a choice of a pat down and soon it will be the case that you won't be able to travel at all without going through body scanners and in Europe remember or Britain certainly you won't have a choice there will be no pat down at all you will be forced through the scanners so imagine the cumulative effect of this and uh, they could even make it so that you can't go into the supermarket without uh, being scanned first. There is no end to this, my friends. We have to stand up against it. Anyway, where was I? Yes, um, uh, if you think that the aeroplane companies are going to object to this, to be honest, I thought that when I made the video destination on known excessive security but actually at that time I didn't realize I didn't know anything about Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the plan for the United Nations and they want to stop people traveling. You will see a lot of evidence for this. I think that's why Richard Branson is getting into banking and things like that now instead of um, airplanes. And obviously when I say there won't be any travelling, I don't mean the wealthy. The wealthy will still be travelling, but it'll be people like you and me. We will be prevented from travelling. That is the plan. 
and there's plenty of documentation for this, but I don't have room to put it in this video. I think we are to blame for this because we have allowed our politicians and the uh, rich to travel completely differently from the rest of us. They go by private jet. They don't have to go through the security that we have to go through. And we have allowed this to happen. Uh, I've talked many times about the fact that we in Britain allow our MPs not to buy their own food or pay their own utility bills. And I know that if I didn't buy my food or pay utility bills, I wouldn't care how much it cost. And we've allowed ourselves to be governed by people that are completely divorced from our lives. They lead a life which is totally different and it's very, very wrong. This isn't envy, this is being practical, saying that we must not allow this. We can see now the repercussions, we can see the implications of this for us because they, they have no empathy, they don't care what is happening to us at all. And, for example, there is a suite in Heathrow, I think it's in Heathrow, uh, which is called the Windsor Suite, and all the celebrities and that go through it, and they pay for it, but they don't have to then go through the uh, scanners and that sort of thing. So, you know, we don't know what's happening. I would like to see David Cameron putting his children, his little daughter, his baby, I think it's still a baby, um, through a body scanner. And I'd like to see him doing it regularly. And that would be an indication to me that uh, they genuinely believe it to be safe. But I can't see that happening somehow. You've even got people like Amanda Knox. That was the uh, girl who's been let off um, in Italy uh, for the murder of the uh, Surrey schoolgirl, uh, not schoolgirl, student, Meredith Kircher. And uh, we, obviously we don't know whether Amanda Knox was guilty or not, but the fact of the matter is, she I think she's behaving very inappropriately and very insensitively because the parents of this poor girl that was murdered are going to be feeling terrible looking at this. Um, she shouldn't be grinning like she is, and she certainly should not be going through a celebrity security system. It is outrageous. Now, there will be some people who will say that the body scanners are being used to protect us for security reasons, but uh, there was an engineer who actually proved that the, you could take a gun through customs and they wouldn't notice it on the body scanner. What he did was he showed that the gun would show up black and if you sew a pocket into the side of um, your clothes you can, put, you can easily put a gun in there and it would not show up because it would be black against black and he proved that on a number of occasions. So you know, there, the Israelis have also said that you could easily bring explosives through the body scanners. So it's not going to help for security. And we know that some of us will say, well, it's in order to make money out of the body scanners. And others will say there's a depopulation agenda. I think both the viewpoints are valid.